All right, welcome back everyone. This is Ebony, AKA Fit Mom Diva of Simplicity Health Style. And today we have Miss Barbara with us. How are you, Barbara? I'm doing well, thank you. Thanks for taking time out of your day to spend with us. And you guys, she has some awesome jewels to share with us today. And if you listen to the end, you will have an opportunity to get a complimentary gift. So listen up for what Barbara wants to share with us today about living our life purpose. So Barbara, start us off by sharing a motivational quote that really inspires you, something that motivates and encourages you to keep going. Um, well, actually, as, um, as I was thinking about it, uh, what came to my mind, it's a Bible verse. Um, my, my blog, it's, um, I'm a faith blog, um, blogger, and uh, my faith is something that I, um, I follow through with my um with what i blog about and um even my business uh and it actually comes from john 10 10 um and it's something that um speaks to me uh on a daily basis especially when things are not going very well for myself right um, but it, it says this the thief does not come except to steal to kill and to destroy i have come um, I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. And um, I, I love that, um, that quote because uh, for myself, at least uh, growing up, I was always very um, self-critical of myself and um, ten, 10 till this time <laughs> uh, to speak very neg negatively um, about uh, just negative thoughts come to my mind and I'm always, um, I tend to bully myself. You know, I don't know if that makes sense, but um, when I read this this uh, part of the Bible, this passage, it just, it reminds me of um, uh, the enemy of my soul trying to always come with lies into my, into my uh, mind and mm -hmm. keeping me from following that purpose or that vision that God has given to me. And mm -hmm. um, I have to constantly remind myself, you know what? Um, a lot of times, at least in the Christian community, we give, I, I believe, a lot of credit to the enemy, which mm -hmm. is, you know, Satan or the right. devil, however you want to call them. Um, right. But I think a lot of times, in, um, especially nowadays, um, sometimes we are our own enemy. You know, yeah. um, we tend to uh, we tend to self um, bully ourselves um, to talk negatively about ourselves and the things that we tell ourselves. Um, most of the time, rather than being positive, are negative. Right. Um, and so that verse just kind of reminds me to keep myself from thinking negatively to staying positive um, because yeah. I think it's positivity that kind of pushes us through, especially when we have, when we deal with hard times because they come. Yes. And I think that sometimes it's easier to blame other people or things or the enemy or the situation when in all actuality, we can just release fear and stop the negative self-talk and yeah. move fearlessly through whatever it is that we're trying to get through. And we will succeed. <laughs> yes. As opposed to putting the blame on everybody and everything else, looking at where can we gain a sense of responsibility in this issue. Yes. I think that is so, so key. And you hear that, you hear that frequently. Oh my, the, the enemy is on me today. And this person said this and this way to me and this circumstance happened. But the funny thing about that is that when I talk to people that have challenging situations that you would think would tear them apart, they are able to still go through those, those moments and learn from it and be a light. So that just goes to show that you making up your own mind <laughs> to be successful in, in the midst of challenges is possible. <laughs> yeah. Yes, we, sometimes we don't, we don't realize how powerful our, our thoughts are right. and how, how much we need to learn how to take, um, take care of them, you know, and make yeah. sure that everything that we're feeding ourselves is um, positive because that's what 
keeps us, I think, moving forward rather than staying stuck in a place where a lot of times we don't want to be there. We just don't know how to move forward. <laughs> yes. Yes. Can you talk about that? Can you talk about a time when perhaps you didn't see the light at the end of the tunnel and through your perseverance, despite the obstacles, you were able to see that goal or that dream to fruition? Uh, yes, actually. Um, a time that I can think of, uh, of um, I've had many, many times, but um, <laughs> most recently, I believe for myself was last year. Um, my husband and I uh, got into a little setback, um, with his job and, you know, um, something unexpectedly, we weren't, we weren't prepared for it. Um, like everything, right. <laughs> we right. usually don't prepare for bad things to happen. And so, um, we, uh, we, we kind of found ourselves in a, um, in a fork in a road, you know, so we, we were kind of, um, facing two decisions to make and, um, one clearly uh, meant for us to kind of retrieve and go back to what we knew, um, what was comfortable for us, what um, we, uh, going back to our strength, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Going back to um, knowing that if we, if we moved um, out of the city and went back to um, what we know, that we knew that we were going to be able to make it happen. Um, right. But that also meant uh possibly leaving behind everything that we have built here in this city and right. including you know our community um the lives of our children because they're growing up here and um it was you know it was just it was just a lot of um changes that not necessarily were gonna be for the positive in right. my mind i thought um so and then the other one was to kind of stick it through and believe god believe that that um god had called us to this place and to build what he um had given us already uh but that meant that we had to fully depend on god right that meant that we had to completely trust in um and have faith in what uh in the unknown Right. And, and that's scary, you know, that's right. very scary to kind of, you know, be thinking of two things and be like, okay, on this side, I know I can make it if I go, you know, cause I, I've been there and I know how to do it. Um, but on this one it's like, all I got is God and I don't see nothing else. So, <laughs> but then for, for my faith, that's where I needed to, um, to kind of figure it out and take that step of, you know, am I willing to take the step? with God kind of with blinds on and not know what the next step is going to be. Right. So I run back to where I, you know, what I, I what we usually know my husband and I, and uh, it was really, really hard. It was uh, summertime and the entire summer, it was a constant battle of going back and forth. Um, but finally we, uh, you know, we uh, kind of, gather around our, our, you know, our people, the closest people to us, people that are not as close, um, our faith community and, um, you know, our godly counsel and just kind of asked, um, you know, ask their opinions, ask um, counsel, wise counsel. And then um, after that, we were able to um, make the decision that uh, has brought me to where I'm at now. <laughs> and so that, um, yeah, that was one of the obstacles that I definitely, we, you know, was very hard for myself, um, especially, and I know for my husband as well, but I'm, you know, grateful that we were able to uh, allow ourselves to trust and depend on God in, in such a way, because now it's like, I see back and I'm like, first of all, what was I so worried about? And second of all, like, you know, God came through once again, faithfully. Yes, and I find that when we look back at some of our difficulties and challenges that we thought was so big, it was like, okay, it wasn't even that big of a deal. <laughs> Why yeah. did I decide to make this step even sooner? You know, so I think that sometimes when we're in the midst of things going on, we look at it as this huge mountain. And you're exactly right. If we were to trust God and trust the process that we're going to be okay at the end of the day, we would 
move through it and just enjoy life <laughs> as opposed yeah. to living in this state of fear and overwhelm and frustration when there's so much more to life that we could be enjoying in that moment. And I go yeah. through that sometimes with certain decisions like, well, I know that if I do A, it's going to produce this outcome. But if I do B, I don't really know what kind of outcome it's going to produce. So I'm just going to go and do A. <laughs> and that's not necessarily the best choice for me. And I think that with, with, with time, you grow in your faith so that you're more inclined to trust God and just know that the B decision is going to be to your best benefit at the end of the day. It's just taking that, that faith and growing that muscle, you know? Yes. And what that's we, my, go ahead. The, oh, I, I'm sorry. I was going to say that's, that's the reason why I like that verse that I read earlier because yeah. it is so reminds me of um, living life more abundantly, meaning you know, just depending and trusting in, in God and having faith and um, relying also on um, oh, the wise counsel that is around you. Because a lot of times we just, we tend to want to isolate ourselves and like deal with the issue by ourselves. And a lot right. of times, you know, and I, I think for me, I, my younger years, I kind of tend to do that a lot and it clearly didn't help. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because you end up bringing in so much overwhelm and frustration yes. and, and unnecessary stress. Yes, then it's then it's necessary, and you begin to learn that as you grow older and wiser. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Tell us about how people that don't necessarily have a strong support system can gain a stronger support system for their goals and dreams because a lot of people might not necessarily have a very strong spiritual connection they might not necessarily have friends or family that understand what their vision is so the family and friends may be emotionally supportive but they don't really understand what to do to help that person and i see that a lot especially in the social media influencer world where it's something new and so a lot of people really don't understand how to help you, even if they wanted to help you. <laughs> yes. So what would you recommend to these people to gain some support for their vision and dreams? Um, you know, I think uh, one, one thing that I, uh, for myself that I did uh, was to uh, allow myself to step out, out of my comfort zone. Mm -hmm. I, I, tend to call myself an introverted because I am very shy, even though it doesn't seem like it, but I am very shy. I mean, once I'm out there, I'm out there, but uh -huh. it takes me a long time to get out there. I don't know if that okay. makes sense. Yeah. Um, makes sense. And so I, um, you have to make a decision to one, to um, find those relationships, you know, yeah. authentic relationships. And I think nowadays, especially with social media, it's so hard to have a face-to-face -face relationship. I mean, we can have it online, but I think when the hard, the hard uh, times come, because they do come, it's not when, but rather if. Right. I'm sorry, not if, but rather when they when. come. Um, I think that it's, it's very uh, good for you to have that close uh, circle of friends that will be there to support you. And I, I, you know, in all honesty, I don't believe that we need to have like, 20 friends out there that are gonna you know kind of surround you and be like come on you can do it you know two three four five how many you are able to get um but as i get older i i i um realize that my circle of um close-knitted friends get smaller and smaller but right. those are the those are the ones that i need in order to kind of shift me back to where I need to be, you know? Right. Um, but at the same time, I also believe that it's good to network outside of that circle because um, for me, at least, I know that, that my, my close circle, they're, they're not entrepreneurs and they're not really big on social media. So right. in order for me to grow from that, I needed to look outside that circle. Yeah. I don't know if that makes sense. So I yeah. think that it, um, for you out there, that's, um, kind of in that position where you realize that that circle that that is close to you it's it's not um has not the same visions as you do go out there i mean i you know i i've learned over the past year that 
there's so many out there in your community that you can do. Um, for myself, I know that there's um, Bible groups that uh, girls do where they invite the entire community and it's just not for your church. It's like anyone can come in. There's also entrepreneurs that do the same. Um, I, you know, last year I decided to go into a, um, a meetup for entrepreneurs and that was um, I think for me revolutionary because I was able to see it kind of brought the perspective to me of like oh you know what these people that seem to have things like perfectly in all reality they're just like me you know right. and right. so it kind of brings them down to my level and, and it gives me that that um, that uh, kind of like nudge to say you know what you can do it too Right. And so I'll say for um, for someone that doesn't have that circle to, you know, go out there because you never know. I mean, you might find your best friend in a meetup somewhere, you know, <laughs> or in a Bible study if you're if you if you're, you know, close to your to your faith or um, I mean, you know, you sometimes it's it's uh, it's outside of your circle that you will find that support. I know that for me when I started my journey um, with my business, I started looking at mentors online. So I will, you know, search her YouTube and then there was this girl, motivational speaker, and I'm like, I like the way she, so I will follow them. And right. then they speak, the way they speak to you is to motivate you and empower you to move forward and to um, keep, you know, doing, keep doing your steps. Um, to reach your goals so that's mm -hmm. how I started and then from I went from that to doing the meetups and then and all meanwhile I still have my friends my circle my family but my family does not live here with me in the city they're far but you know it's it's um reached out to them and you know when you're feeling kind of low those are the people that are gonna lift your spirits up right. um but if you need growth um, outside of just, you know, just a nudge, I say, go out, go out into the community and just figure out what's there. And it's kind of scary yeah. <laughs> to put yourself out there. But I think once you do it, you grow. Yeah. And, and it, it pushes you to go, to go forward. Yes. And I totally agree with you being able to find people that are like mine because if you really stop and think about it, there are billions of people on this earth that probably think very similarly to you and may even also have very similar interests. They might not be the same exact interests, but they're similar. And the more connectedness that you have to these people, the more you realize that you're not alone in your endeavors. And you're exactly right, that we all have very similar struggles. So for example, in the social media influencer world, we don't all do the same thing. However, when we start to talk to each other, we all have very similar struggles and, and issues when it comes to the challenges that come with that industry. We all have very similar mindsets as to how we want to be impactful in this world, but we might not necessarily always feel like it because we experience our own bad days, you know, and how do we break out of that and still be consistent and impactful to our community. So having a support system of people that think like you and do something very similar is key, particularly those days when you don't necessarily feel like showing up. If you have a community of people that inspire you, you're going to be more likely to lift yourself up out of that deep, dark depression. <laughs> When you're going on social media and you're seeing all your best friends posting positivity and encouragement and quotes that are that are supposed to lift your spirit, you're not going to stay in that for long. You might stay in it even for the whole day. But by the second or third day, you're probably saying to yourself, well, I need to get up and do something. <laughs> you <Yeah. know? laughs> so Definitely. having that support is so, so key when, when you're down in the dumps. And we're all going to have those days. It's not always going to be unicorns and rainbows. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, and and that's when um, that's when your support system it's so um, it's so important to have, you know, and to you know make a um, make a decision that you're gonna create those authentic relationships so right. that you can have that support when it when it's needed because it's needed, right. especially when you go through a journey of like 
trying to better yourself. Right. Um, you know, it's, it's, it, it, I've heard once someone said that the, the higher you go, the lonelier it gets. And yeah. um, it, it tends to be very true, but I think um, also on the top, there's other people. And so you just exactly. need to learn how to like open yourself up for those opportunities. Yes. And then I think also that the higher you go, if you have a humble spirit about yourself, it doesn't necessarily have to be lonely. I think yeah. that what could happen is the higher you go, some people may think that they're better than other people. And so you don't relate to the human being the same way. But if you, yeah. if you keep that sense of humbleness about you, I believe that there are plenty of people that you could still form bonds with. Yes. One of the things that you mentioned too was that Sometimes if you are more reserved or shy or perhaps um, not used to stepping outside of your comfort zone and just starting conversations with people, I think that that can be a hindrance at first, but the more you do it, the more likely it is that you're going to find it less challenging. And you're also yeah. going to find that people don't bite your head off for saying hello and, and starting a conversation, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So I think that um, for people out there that tend to be more shy or reserved, Start off just by finding one or two people a week that you can send a message to and pump them up. Say something that they do that you admire and just start there because everybody likes to be told that they're doing something well, right? Yes. <laughs> so if you can reach out to someone and say, you know, I really do appreciate the content that you put out and this is the reason why and just start a conversation from that as opposed to a conversation of wanting a lot from them, a lot of times it eases the, the it, you, you allow yourself to ease into the conversation better and yeah. more people are receptive to that because I think sometimes people are more fearful of the rejection that might come with reaching out to people. So not only are they shy, but now they're being rejected. <laughs> because yes. the person is ignoring them or the person That's is saying, good. I'm too busy to talk to you, you know? <laughs> yeah. So yeah. taking it baby steps at a time. Yes, I think that's, uh, um, especially for someone that's uh, more of an introverted person, baby yeah. steps, it's, it's a big step, you yeah. know, um, because you don't, I mean, you see the extroverters and it's like, by, by the time the night is over, they already know every single person in that room. Right. But it's, that the same way with the introverts the introverts is like they probably know one person if i you know at best but right. one thing that i did um that i that i have come to learn is that um as long as you stay real to who you are people tend to accept that you know yeah. if um if you be if you approach the conversation or the person you know um with authenticity I yeah. think that, um, you know, people kind of tend to um, feel the vibe. And right. so, you know, you might not vibe completely with the person, but if they see your realness, I think it's, right. you know, you, you kind of knock down that rejection because even though that, you know, you might not have a lot of things in common, in common, at least that they will uh, be willing to speak to you because you're, you know, being authentic and being right. real with them um, rather than just you know approaching the um, conversation or anyone with like oh I need something from you and let me see what how I can get it you know because right. we all need something but um, in order to build authentic relationships you have to give a little of yourself as well yeah I, I, I believe you know you can't just take take um, I mean a, a a relationship it's 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 two-sided you know just right. as much as you want them to give you you want you want to give as well because then it's not fair <laughs> exactly exactly so speaking about relationship building talk a little bit about your brand and what were your intentions with your social media platform and are you looking for people to collaborate with um, yes, I, um, you know, I, I started my business, um, because, uh, like I mentioned earlier, I had a lot of, um, 
issues. <laughs> I mean, I still do. I have a lot of issues with like, you know, putting myself down a lot. And um, I came to the realization that um, it wasn't the world that was against me. It was myself that was against me. And, right. um, but I didn't have uh, the right people to kind of tell me otherwise. Right. So um, at the more that I learned and the more that I grew into uh, my relationship with God, uh, the more that I realized, you know what, there's probably someone out there on the other, on, on the other side of that screen that might need that encouragement that I wasn't able to get. Um, yeah. And I, you know, I didn't get it because my family or my friends were, were mean to me. And, you know, it's, I think it's because they didn't know how to give it to me. You know, right. they, they probably, they have their same issues and they don't even know how to encourage yourself. Right. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, so there's no, I'm not blaming anyone. It's just, that's the journey that I had. And so, um, God gave me the vision to use the platform and I love social media. So, you know, um, he gave me the vision to just, um, be that encourager for, for that one girl that's out there. And so, um, it went from that to just kind of, you know, researching and doing, um, um, learning about uh, people's stories and most of the stories, you know, tend to deal with fear, with doubt, with insecurity, with depression, which is all those things I went through. And I'm like, you know what? Um, we need um, more of positivity, more of good vibes, more of, um, of, of the goodness of what humanity is and not what, you know, putting people down and like, you know, I'm better than you kind of deal. Um, and so that's the reason why I created Simply Grace, which is my, um, my blog and now my online shop, um, because I want to inspire and empower women to uh, live a, uh, an abundant life. Really, right. that's what it is, you know, being able to um, get outside of, of our head and, and really see what's out there because the world is beautiful. It's imperfect, but it's beautiful. And there's yeah. so much out there that we can learn and there's so much out there that we can give of ourselves. But at the yeah. same time, um, we might not know how. And so um, my, my uh, desire is to kind of let the girls out there or the women out there um, to let them know, you know what? Yes, there's a lot that you can give um, you just need to learn how to um, own your story and just right. share it with your heart. So, yes, thank you so much for that. That is beautiful. And we all have a story. And sometimes yeah. we feel like, would anyone really care about what I have to say? And in all actuality, there are a lot of people that are waiting <laughs> for you to say what you have to say. Yes. You know, so I think that remembering that we're all unique, we're all beautiful, and there's a lot of beauty in this world, even with this imperfections, as you said. There's yes. so much beauty in this world. I think that sometimes we tend to dwell on the darkness just because of the fact that that's easier for people to talk about sometimes. You know, mm -hmm. the woe is me, and these are all the things that are happening to me. Rather than taking a step back and actually expressing gratitude for all the good things that are occurring in your life because a lot of the good things in your life they could be taken back <laughs> if you're not appreciative you, you know yes. so i think yeah. that focusing on the silver lining and those positive things is is particularly key especially when people around you don't necessarily as we talked about earlier in the interview see the light at the end of the tunnel that they, they begin to realize that there's hope yes I'm yep. going to include all of your contact info in the description box. And for those of you that are listening, I feel as though Brenda or Barbara, I'm sorry, I'm calling you the wrong name. Barbara is someone that you do resonate with. I encourage you to follow her because you're going to find that when you are in those dark moments, you're going to want as many of these positive, inspiring people around you as possible to help uplift you. And one of the things that I created a while back was a Facebook group. It's called Nutrition for Busy Women. It's nutrition, the number four, busy women. We don't just talk about nutrition from a food consumption standpoint. We talk about nutrition for the mind, body, and soul. So if you're looking for an online community of women that are positive and supportive of your goals, 
join us and you'll have an opportunity to get a complimentary gift by doing so. And for those of you that have a story within you, as Barbara talked about, it's important to get that out into the world so that people have that sense of knowing that they're not alone. So if you have a story yeah. in you that you would like to also share, contact me. All of my contact info is in the description box as well. Contact me and share your challenges and your success stories with us. This will be sh shared all around the world. So if you are shy and you want to step outside of your comfort zone, as Barbara said, <laughs> this would be an awesome opportunity to do so. Barbara, do you have any last words of encouragement that you could give to us? Um, just for the girl that's um, on the other side of the screen, you know, don't forget to live beautifully because it is a beautiful life and, you know, we only have one, might as well make the best of it. Yes, right I love that. She has Live Beautifully shirts in her shop that I told her that I am definitely going to get. <laughs> so you guys take a look at the link to her shop and... I'm sure that there'll be something there that you either would love or you know somebody would love that you can help support her. You guys have an awesome rest of the day wherever you are in the world and always remember to live a life full of meaning and purpose so that you become more fulfilled. You guys have an awesome day and I'll connect with you in our next episode. Bye. <laughs>